What's up, people? It's your man, Herbal Lover, coming from the Black Black and Ease Mobile. Reporting live and direct. Uh, man. Shoo! I know DeAndre Page. I've I seen your comment. Okay, I've seen your comment. God dang it. I know Vanda Blue is back. Yeah, the Lakers signed him to a two-way contract. I thought sure it would be somebody else to get it, but they bought Vanda Blue. I, I told you guys how I feel about Vanda Blue. Uh, Vanda Blue is, is just another Jordan Clarkson, you know, ISO King. And Jordan Clarkson, he got a little bit better, but, you know, Jordan Clarkson, is a, he's always a two-guard. And one thing people have to understand as a two-guard, your your objective is to shoot first. That's what a two-guard is, why it's called a shooting guard. And a lot of guys, you know, they're just smaller guys who play that position. But Vanda Blue, like I said, I mean, I watched him. I observed him from the summer leagues to the preseason. And all I kept doing, I think this guy, this guy, he had three people on and he still tried to go up and make a shot. So I, I don't know why they, they uh, I guess they probably just giving him a chance because he's been in, um, in the, what's it, the G League now? He's been in there for, you know, most of all his career. So they give him an opportunity shot. Be honest with you, I, I hope that the Chicago Bulls wave uh, Nawaba so we can pick him back up and drop Randall Blue. I, I like Nawaba's defense. So I, I definitely will go after Nawaba, but, you know, just if they drop him. But, you know, never know. But anyway, just a little update up a little up, update on everything. Um, Jules Randall, he's um, he, he actually doing a... Uh, doing the uh doing the um what was it the summer league no i'm sorry the preseason he actually had uh the thing that was like the last game or something like that he went out with back spasm and come to find out he has a um intercostal strain it's almost similar to a back spasm but they're saying that um he most likely might be ready to go i know um lonzo ball update uh with his ankle injury uh he definitely probably will play he already stated that he definitely will play the opener if y'all look at the uh my first the beginning of this video you know you see my tweet i tweeted uh bill walton you know suggesting that he talked to his son about this lineup that i suggested but you know he probably laugh at it that's if he even look at the uh, tweet you know i hope you look at it because uh you know y'all know how i feel about brand Ingram. you know i one thing about me i don't want to give up on potential players I, I do not want to give up on them you know once you become a laker even though if i might not like you you know i still got to support the team you know to a to a degree, you know, I, but I'm not going to be biased. You know, that's one that I won't do. You know, I won't sit there and a guy can have 10 bad games, you know, straight, straight 10 games. I said, oh, he's still a beast. I, I'm not going to do nothing foolish like that. But anyway, Catavius Caldwell Pope will definitely miss the first two games of the season due to the D, DUI that he got, um, that he was charged. So he's going to miss the two, two games. And uh, based on that, um, it was asked about, you know, what, what would the rotation be like? So Luke, um, they asked him what Luol Dane might get uh, Julius Randle minutes based on the fact if Julius Randle don't start the um, the opener. But Lou Walton stated that he said um, he's not sure which way he should go because he can make different lineups. You know, he can change whatever lineup he want. Now here's the thing. All right, based on the fact that Julius Randle, it just said Julius, I hope Julius Randle, you know, start the opener because you know ESPN came out. You know, it's somewhat a rumor. I'm not how true it is. But he came out stating that uh, Julius Randle was a little bit upset, uh, well, angry at Kuzma. And I'm thinking what they try to do, they're trying to uh, wage a war between two players on our team. You know, that's when they were ESPN and a lot of these reporters do. They try to find something, some school, or just try to start something in order to get something going. You know, get some type of energy going. And something negative, you know what I mean? Because that's what they feed off, negative energy. And at the end of the day, I don't think Julius Randle is upset about Kuzma starting. You know what I'm saying? If he does start. But he should be more upset with himself. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you've been in the league with us for three years. And I, like I told people, the first year I don't count because he got injured. The second year it was all Kobe. But last year you had a chance to really showcase your, your skills. But I'm mean, you know what? I'm not even gonna blame, I'm not even gonna blame Julius all, all that. Because here's the thing, and I told people and over again, and you can try to debate me all you want, and I'm I'm a, I'm gonna prove you wrong. You tell me. Right now, in the NBA, going, oh, I ain't gonna say going all the way back, like in the 60s, because I already follow that that far back. But you tell me the last 20 years, name me five starters on a team, on one team, that averaged 25 minutes a game. They remember, they didn't start getting minutes until Magic Johnson took over. When Magic Johnson took over, he said, no, play these guys, play this guy, give them more minutes. The only one that was getting a lot of minutes at that time was Brandon Ingram, because Brandon Ingram is Lou Walton's man. Keep that in mind, okay? Now, based on that alone, because Brandon Ingram's Lou Walton man, he's not magicing him, but magic him holding on to him. But magic him probably had other ideas. Once they see it, they're like, okay, well, you know, we might go a different route with it. And that's only because I feel like this at the end of the day, and I'm gonna say it over and over again, and I'm gonna keep saying it to the freaking cows blow up or something, you know. And I mean, I ain't gonna say blow up because you know, you know, YouTube might um 
screen my video. But anyway, I will definitely put Brandon Ingram at the two. KCP is out. He's out for two games. I will put Brandon at the two just to see how we do, just see how he mess with Luke, um, Lonzo Ball in the backcourt. Because, you know, Brandon Ingram in the preseason last year, um, um, yeah, in the preseason last year, not, oh, the preseason, not, not really the preseason. Yeah, the preseason last year. No, nah, not really the preseason, the summer league. The summer league this year. Sorry about that. The summer league this year, he brought the ball. Now, he ran the ball. And also, last year, he ran the ball a couple times, too, in the regular league. And, you know, in the, um, in the regular, um, what you call it? So, my thing is this. If Brandon Ingram can bring the ball down, why not try him at the two? What does it hurt to put him at the two? Think about it. You are loaded up front. You load it. I know somebody said, you know, and Valerie uh, Cologne, I, I know you said that Brandon can't play no defense. But let's be honest. Let's look on the other side of the coin, though. Yeah, he might not. And I think Brandon was pretty decent. He might not be the best defender on the team, but he got that long wingspan. He's pretty decent. And once he gets the um, the confidence, he'll be somebody like uh, LeBron James where, you know, chasing all people, block from behind and all that because he got them long arms. So he always can get back if he, you know, if he loses man. But here's the thing. Who in the freaking NBA can play him on offense? Think about it. Because the guy's 6'10", right? Well, not, well, 6'10", almost 7 feet tall. The average shooting guard is like, what, 6'4", 6'6"? This guy can post up, shoot over these guys. That's why I'm saying Luke Wall got to use these guys toward, you know, according to their strength. Not according to what you want because in the day, it doesn't work that way, Luke. You're going to mess around and lose your job, man. You got to get these guys playing. You can't have Kuzma in that second unit. Kuzma should be starting. You know what I mean? He's the hottest rookie right now. There's no point of him being on the bench. You know what I mean? You cannot say, okay, well, we're going to go and start learning that. Brooke Lopez, Brandon Ingram at the three, and then, you know, and, and KCP and, and on the ball. It ain't going to work. If you only got one shooter on that on that starting five, it ain't going to work, man. We're going to lose a lot of freaking games because they know, okay, well, we'll let these guys, we'll just make these guys shoot on us. Only per shooter, not really per shooter, only one that really can shoot is Brooke Lopez. But Brooke Lopez don't have no inside game. That's why Julius Randle will be needed down low. Because Julius Randle, his inside game is much more better than Larry. I mean, the, uh, the, yeah, Larry Nance. You know, because he can get the ball down low and he do a little bit post moves. Larry Nance is like a high fly. He's not, he don't have no low post moves. He's on somebody where if they're doing fast breaks, that's where he's his best at. You know, catching balls on the run, you know, with Lonzo Ball passing to him. But if like he posts up down low, he don't really have no post up moves. And that's why I think Julius Randle is, is, you know, putting him on the second unit is kind of hurting. You know, like, okay, KCP is going to be out two games. Put Brandon Ingram at that two and let Kuzma run at three. Let If, if, if Julius Randle played um, tomorrow, let him play the power forward spot. Bring bring Brooke Lopez out a little bit to hit jumpers. You know what I mean? Because he's not a – Brooke Lopez is not a good rebounder. He's not a good defender. And he's not a good shot blocker. So you got to use him according to his strip. The guy can bang threes and jumpers. Let him stick out there and let Julius Randle work his magic down low. And I know Lou Watt, I'm hoping that Magic will put their foot down and say, look, guys, let's do it this way. Because the way you're doing it is not working. I know you try to run that Golden State offense, but I don't really think that Magic will let him run that Golden State offense. The reason why I say that, uh, DeAndre Page, yeah, I know you put it on there. The reason why I say they're not going to really let him run that, uh, that, that offense to a, team, oh, I mean, to a degree is because the offense is going to be going through Brooke Lopez. If you look at Golden State Warriors offense, it's motion, like motion passing offense. It's, you know, everybody gets to touch the ball. So Brooke Lopez is going to be the main feature in that offense. And then Brandon Ingram. That's how it's going to be. But I think Kuzma is going to step above um, Ingram. If he played a small four spot, that's what I'm saying. Ingram playing that too, man. He can post up more people. He's taller than the majority of freaking guards. He can shoot up over him. He can catch lobs over him. You know what I'm saying? So you got to use the court of strength. Julius Randle down low. Brooke Lopez shooting jumper. Kuzma hanging around the wing for the threes. You know what I mean? That way you ain't clogging up the middle. It's spaced out. You know, Ingram it will play much better because you got two shooters and somebody like Julius Randle. So Julius Randle could step out. If, I, if Ingram go ISO, Julius Randle could pop out. Ingram can cut right to the middle because he got this little guy out on him. This guy only 6'3", 6'4". Ingram take him to the basket or shoot over him. You know what I mean? He ain't got to freaking take him to the basket all the time. He can shoot over these guys, man. Straight up just shoot over him. Think about it. So I'm hoping that this is what they do, man. I'm hoping. But, you know, they're saying that... Uh, Luol Day might get his man. Oh, come on, man. Oh, my gosh, dude. I'm about to go on this roof and jump off, man. Luol Day. I ain't got nothing against Luol Day. You know, Luol Day is a great player. You know, yeah, but he's, you know, it's, this time is done, man. You know, this guy, you know, eating freaking food stamps and, and steaks on us. You know what I'm saying? It's not fair. You know what I mean? Squirrels should walk on him and, and crap on him. You know what I'm saying? The guy, it, it's just pissing me off with Luol Day. You know, Luol Day need to just go in and just say, you know what? Hey, take this contract, contract back. Matter of fact, let me get a crate, y'all, and I'm going to mark it pink, and I'm going to walk out here with a pink slip, faking like I, you know, like I, I don't want to be on a team no more. Like, come on, man. 
Oh my gosh, Lou all day. All right, they better not get this guy on no playing time, man. Um, it is what it is. I know they got to showcase Lou Alday. But you know what? Lou Alday been in the league long enough. The players will know if he still got it or not. You know, and, and, and this is going to be a team that probably going to want to make a run to the playoff. It's like almost towards the end of the um, season when they can make trades and all that. And hopefully Lou Alday, you know, gets on the team. We really need to get rid of that contract. And, you know, I like, like I said, I like the squad we got right now, but I think we still need shooters. Caruso, I know a lot of people say that, you know, they like the Ennis. I told you guys, you know, how I feel about Ennis, you know, from the beginning. You know, Ennis, to me, he had one good game. But at the end of the day, I like Caruso because he could bang threes. And that's why I think Caruso is going to be a part of that second unit because they don't really have no shooters. You know, besides, if they start, if they don't start Kuzma and put Kuzma in that second unit. So, you know, um, it'll, give, it'll be Caruso. And I think Caruso, I'm, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Jordan Carson played good on Caruso. A lot of y'all guys ain't noticed that. Jordan Carson, his last three games in the in in preseason looked good. And that was with Caruso feeding him. He looked good with Caruso. He ain't had that with uh, Lou Williams because Lou Williams, you know, him and Lou Williams, both of them were shooters. You know, so, you know, they were basically just spreading the ball with, with, with them two. But Caruso, Caruso was spread, you know, equally among all four players and himself. So Jordan Claus is gonna feel good on that second unit. I've Jordan Claus, I've been loving that second unit, man. Don't take me off that second unit. I mean, don't get me wrong, laws of balls are pads too, but Caruso, man, you know, he I think right now at this time and age, Caruso is a better shooter than Lonzo. So that's what I'm saying. So that first starting five, man. Oh my god. Woo! Oh, I'm about to dookie on myself. No, but at the end of the day, though, I'm just hoping that uh Lou Walton does, you know, don't be, you know, stubborn and definitely let Ingram play that too. And let um you know, and let him play the two and let Kuzma play that three. So I'm hoping that um, he take a chance to run with it, you know. But I, I don't know, man. I mean, I think Magic might come out and say something to him. You know, the first game they might play, you know. If I see Lou Dan at that small forward spot, or it, they better not put him in. See, that's the thing. Like, where can he play? You already loaded. You know what I'm saying? Like, you right now, you got, all right, you got Ingram, Ingram and uh, Kuzma both can play the, uh, the, the three. Then you got Lou Aldane. You're trying to get Lou Aldane some minutes. You got freaking Harp that can play the three. You got, well, Harp still injured. I think uh, his Achilles uh, heel or something. Something, something ruined over him. Something, you know, he's still injured, you know, pre-injury. He's not really hurt as much, but they, I think he's he not going to play this game. But about the Lakers, I definitely start Ingram. That, that's that's me. That's me. I, I would definitely start him. But, you know, y'all guys get in the comment section. Tell me what you think. You know, do, do the Lakers start Ingram at the two since KCP going to be out? Why not? It's the beginning of the season. You know what I mean? Hey, you, you know, ain't no wrong with losing a couple games if we lose him. You know what I'm saying? But I think that he should go with that offense and see how it gel and see what happens. I'm telling you, he might be shocked because the starting five should always be better than the second unit. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's no way that the second unit is going to be better than the starting five. But if he go with the lineup that he want to go with Larry Nance, Oh my gosh, Larry Nance and, and Ingram at the uh, power, power um, at the um, the uh, forward spots. Nine times to ten, that second unit is gonna be better than a freaking starting five. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. But y'all get in the comments and tell me what you think about um, Ingram playing the two. You know, do you like that? Him playing playing the two for these two games while KCP is out and let Kuzma play the small forward just to see what we got. You know, to see you know just give give it an opportunity to see how it work out. You know what I mean? It might be fun for Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball might have ten assists in that game or twelve. You never know. You know what I mean? With, with Brooke Lopez and Kuzma. Then you got Ingram or Slasher who can also shoot when he's hot. I'm telling you, man, you got to start them. Come on, here. Come on. <laughs> anyway, y'all love you guys. Have a blessed one. Take care.